welcome to the webinar and uh, i hope everyone safe and healthy so let me start the webinar uh, probably you must have all heard about the term gis or if not you must have heard the word map because probably now after google maps probably everyone is now using it in the daily life for various reasons for your commuting to identify to find something or to plan a trip or what not apart from staying in your home the moment you want to go out in some or the other way you are all dependent on using maps for your daily activity and also for commercial and business works so what is gis so where did it all start so yeah maybe we'll have to go back into the history and just try to understand okay when did it all start what did our ancestors do okay so today you we are going to see uh, cover these all points a quick introduction about the history and how gis has come into prominence what is gis the basics of gis the applications of gis two or three case studies evolution on the field finally career path and job opportunities okay so coming going back to the history if you see on to the left we have a tabloid which was made in 600 bc so back then this was one of the relics which was uh, identified that this is how they have communicated about mapping or in order to understand various places they want to go or in order to convey an information so moving into the platonomy uh, that is around 150 ad okay and uh, slowly coming into the middle ages you will have more of the islamic uh, influence in the map making where they have introduced a lot of uh, art and uh, motif culture into the mapping okay and finally when you're moving into the renaissance period that is around 1850 ad where most of the this is uh, an example map given of australia but by then most of mapping has been into uh, uh, most uh, for the travel mostly for the ship ship movements and uh, finally in the modern era 2000 ad you can you know probably you'll have a lot of vast growth in mapping which has gone into around more than 1000 or 1500 applications so so we have it in our history that map was part of us now coming to exactly what and where gis has come up into this so map is only your end product where you will be using it to maybe uh, to find a solution or plan something for you but the process of building it and how you make it that is where is gis maybe earlier they they used to draw maps on just a canvas probably then onto a paper and now you have a system now you have lots of data and you have multiple applications or requirements and a pro lot of problems to deal with so a quick snapshot in 1854 there was a large outbreak of cholera in london back then john snow he started disease mapping so what he did was he started mapping where there were uh, deaths and that too specifically for a broad street so this is a street in london on which he has mapped so after mapping he also thought there has to be some re uh, relevance to maybe an other utility or the uh, futures of the city so he started drawing the water line so the moment he drew the water line and then after seeing a lot of deaths so he understood that there was some relation to the water line which is spreading the cholera so practically there were maps before that also but what is the difference of what john snow did and the others is he tried to query onto the map and see what he can find so he did just two things he mapped geographic information of the city and try to relate of a problem which he seen so the same thing 
maybe you, we also do the same thing now. Maybe you use Google Maps. You go, you want, try to find from one location to another, you get your solution. So, so now what is GIS? GIS stands for Geographic Information System. So what is a map is you, you all know. So how GIS turns into a map is what we're going to know in this webinar. So map making is actually called cartography. So there are different procedures, methods, and a lot of uh, concepts in cartography. But GIS is a more of a digital form of it where you maybe map and link information to it. And then you query the information to get your required output. So we are basically harnessing technology to find a solution for you because it's not easy to analyze just a few thousand cells with the tip of your tongue. So, so you are ultimately now dependent on technology. So there has to be some software on which we'll be doing the whole mapping and the analysis and the outputs. So the next other thing in GIS is location. You are virtually building a whole world within a known environment of GIS. So you bring in your real data onto the virtual world and you start trying to analyze it and correlate and try to understand. On the screen, you see there are multiple layers here. So GIS exactly does that. Maybe you will be having a base world or you will create a base map out of real world on which you create multiple sets of data, which are called a thematics. A thematic map is can be anything. It can be a map only with having a layer of water bodies, maybe only with the land use or only with the transportation information and multiple. You can go even to the cadastral information or where you call your parcels of the survey numbers. So, but the beauty of GIS is it lets you overlay everything one on another. So because of the transparency and location accuracy, you are able to find a logical output there. And now once you query, that is where you're going to get your outputs. So that is a very basic understanding of what GIS is. Now coming to, so what are the main blocks of GIS, the whole process? You have a set of map, which you are going to prepare using various remote sensing techniques. And then you have a set of data. Now you process your data to bring it into an equilibrium form. And now you start analyzing and then you get your output. So this is an overall snapshot, how much ever technology you use, but this is the basic functional flow of GIS. So we are now dependent on uh, maps and data. So ultimately data is what uh, enhances your map. All right. So the main building blocks of GIS, spatial data and non-spatial data. Spatial data is any, any, any uh, maybe a line, a polygon, or a point. These are the three basic forms of GIS. A point information would be any specific point, maybe a restaurant, uh, maybe a gas station. Okay, line information would be like streets, highways, and then a polygon would be your buildings, your land parcels. So when you start, so you can define anything in the world using these three building blocks of GIS. So now coming to the data. So you have two different types of data. Okay, every, maybe every picture you click with your phone. When you see it, when you zoom it, now we are saying in talking in terms of megapixels. So when a data is in a pixel format, it has to be thought, uh, understood that it is called raster data. Raster data stores all your data in various different cells. And each cell is allocated a value between zero and 256. Based on this bit data, you will be able to see a different color forms. And then ultimately, if you're zooming out 
and the more coarser resolution there you will be able to see a lot of a clarity image so now coming to a vector data so vector data is the same data of like an entity where uh, is stored in the form of an x and y suppose the street starts from here and it reaches to another end of a 1 km if you're drawing a straight line so it is it stores the value in in the form of an x x starts at a so and so coordinates y star and ends at a so and so coordinates so you are building your basic data that is the point polygon or a line all of these are actually vector data raster data here is generally uh, we get the data through a remote sensing technique now many of you might be confused uh, is remote sensing and gis it's all synonymous to an extent yes most of the community all feel that yes G remote sensing is actually gis but remote sensing is one of the source giver for gis you get all your data using remote sensing without remote sensing you may not get your gis data as you see today so what is remote sensing i'll try not to go into remote sensing because it's a very deep vast subject and uh, i'll just try to tell you to the point where remote sensing applies to gis and in what way it helps and fetches the data so that you can relate it to your uh, non spatial data so i'll quickly give you few examples so okay before the example i think i should tell about remote sensing remote sensing is anything which you get any information which you get remotely like suppose you are seeing a distant object your eye is a remote sensing organ so similarly we send satellites and we capture data and the satellite data is actually called remote sense data now there is four different resolutions in this in which where majority of importance is of the spatial resolution spatial resolution is the accuracy or the uh, pixel length which uh, gives you more accurate data for example if you see, you must have all used uh, in the google maps and future called satellite or you must have, you have come across google earth so the data which you are seeing is basically various data uh, vast data sets of satellite imagery so they are stitched together and as you keep zooming you keep getting to see more uh, clear data more accurate data what is the science behind that so as you keep loading it keeps on refreshing with a much better spatial resolution data so to the point if someone says the spatial resolution of a satellite data is 30 cm that means 30 by 30 cm which forms a square on the ground would be one pixel in on the map so now you can assume at what level our satellites are capable of so the moment you capture that accurate data and the moment you get on onto your systems now you use your eye which will be a visual interpreter and which you process and build your vector data so from raster data you build your vector data this uh, probably most of the current uh, scenarios you are this is the major workflow or else suppose you already have an existing data set or else let's say okay you have a map of last 25 years survey of india prepares these maps so now you want to get the same information onto the gis system so what do you do you scan it like you just scan the map you get it onto gis and now you start drawing on it so ultimately you are generating your data from a raster data set and you are converting into vector data set so what is the advantage of converting from raster to vector the main advantage is raster data sets are very heavy in nature if you can see maybe nowadays if you are taking a good photograph using your phone camera the size of the picture might go even to 8 mb now imagine if you are taking a in a picture from a satellite so 
maybe a 17 by 17 kilometer on ground would be around of a size of 1.5 gb now to process the data set the raster data stores in a cell format is what i told so to query and to get your output it consumes a lot of uh, physical resources so for that reason we turn it into a vector data which will be very light the same map suppose a topo sheet if you are drawing and if you are trying to digitize and bring it into a vector format maybe the topo sheet uh, size is around 60 mb but if you start vectorizing it you get all the data into less than an mb so on to this if you add your non spatial data or another in other terms in gis we usually call it attribute data so what is non spatial data is any information related to that specific point line or a polygon which you have already captured through various sources maybe you have a list of data maybe you have a, a, a big database of uh, information the moment you link this table to the vector data it starts you can query on it and you can get more information out of it i think now is the time i show you with an example okay so here in this table we are able to see four different locations so everyone knows these capital names right so on to the right of it we have a latitude and longitude all right now why is accuracy important because if you mark something on a map and tell that this is trivandrum and now if you also mark another point this is mumbai and you know that they are not next to each other so you also need to know that they are quite far apart and there has to be some accuracy and pinpointing because if if you start querying and if you don't reach to the destination you obviously you know that if there is something wrong in the system so in order to reach to your uh, destination or get your solution accuracy is a key part of gis so that is where location is important so when quickly referring back to the google maps you turn on your location reason being you are providing the application with your current location and where you are and it will compare with a fixed reference system of where an other entity is already mapped to this accuracy is now in you have a coordinate reference system or you call here, here is latitude and longitude i think that I'll, i'll i'll try to stick to only latitude and longitude because there are various number of reference systems and different concepts in, concepts in it so now you see here the number of digits you have here it's it's not easy to just understand that right so but it really makes sense now if you mark all the four points onto a map so what did i do i turned the non spatial data or which is in the attribute a table onto a map so this is the linkage of a spatial data and a non spatial data it actually now it's very easy for you to tell right okay trivandrum is far from mumbai and delhi is much more far from trivandrum so you you couldn't do this kind of an interpretation just from seeing a table so that is the advantage of a linking of a non spatial data to a spatial data okay now let's make it little more tough you keep adding more information to it let's take a very basic example of the weather you have different climate all the four places have different climatic conditions and imagine now you have a full data set for the whole india and now suppose it becomes suppose you bring it all onto an excel and you say on a particular day what would be the temperature variation all across india it is impossible to go through the excel and identify because maybe it, you will be maybe you have a super computer in your mind but that's not easy right so now you harness gis you map link all the uh, attribute data link the temperature data to different locations so you have a map so okay this tells you that okay there's a hot spot okay above Uh, near orissa and gujarat and it's very cool near uh, 
Karnataka, little hot again in Goa. So I am able to just interpret this only by seeing a map. And now assume, now you want to give something which is in a four dimension. That is you add time to it. And then if you see, it maybe you can just understand that, okay, there are different wind patterns on this. And the whole same thing, if you're seeing on an Excel, it, it may, you may not make sense. But the same thing, if you're seeing on a map, okay, you know, where is the depression? Uh, what's the pattern of the wind flow? So that is what GIS does. It lets you interpret, analyze your data, interpret and make a more sensible output where you can visually interpret and understand the outcome. Why I'm saying visually interpret is you, you, have, you may also see a lot of Excel tables, but you're not able to make out any information through it. But if you see a map, you're, you're able to talk. So it is conveying a lot of information, you're interpreting it and you are able to talk. So that is the main soul of GIS data. So there are two other things, since we are now dependent on technology, you have a hardware and a software. So hardware is like a system uh, where you have a CPU, you have internet, and uh, you have a good monitor. Monitor plays a crucial role in GIS because you, you are required to see the data already when you are creating at a much better resolution so that you can accurately mark it. And uh, there are multiple softwares in this, so a uh, very well-known proprietary software is ArcGIS. Now on to the open source, which is a content of ArcGIS is Quantum GIS. And you have a few GIS and remote sensing uh, softwares. Frankly, now remote sensing is made part of the GIS. And that is where you have Eridas Imagine and MicroStation. Eridas Imagine was earlier a purely remote sensing software. They are capable to handle huge uh, uh, satellite data sets and still work swiftly, which was not a case in most of the other softwares, but now everyone has picked up and there are there's now more attention actually to GIS sector because there are, it's, it has seen that much of development. All right, we will check back onto the evolution of GIS uh, in the later slides now. The next important point is location, as I said about it. So what is uh, location? How do you define it? So you refer it onto a certain system, right? So you know that you, you must have read about a coordinate system in your social uh, textbooks, probably in your school. So coordinate system, you have a latitude, you have a longitude, right? So now, let's come to the bigger picture of how you acquire that information right and how you relate it on to a virtual system so that it is accurate in the virtual system and relating to exactly what is in the real world as i said delhi delhi has a specific coordinates right so we have identified doing using various mathematical uh, processes so now how do you link it onto a virtual system wherein you plan and your application is uh, built on it such that maybe your output has to reach your target location. So I am telling, I can, I think I will quickly give you an example of a, uh, here is a military application where you have, maybe, yeah, maybe you must have watched in more, most of the movies, they just launch a sat, uh, missile from one country and it has to reach to another country. So how, how does it do? So you need to have a specific reference system which is accurate enough and uh, it should not compromise because the moment it compromises, your, your satellite might not reach your enemy but may actually land at your own home country. So that is the power of location. So coming to coordinate reference system in GIS, you have main three different uh, concepts. Again, this is a vast subject. This uh, this has been, there are different forums, different uh, research is done onto various projection systems, spheroids and datums. And every country, every uh, organization have their own different um, projection systems so that 
it suits to their local uh, scenarios so what is datum let me just quickly tell you about data so you have our earth earth you know is not uh, like it's not flat right and it's also not even earth is an uneven body okay so now and it there are various heights to it so datum is nothing but a foundation or a reference system on which you uh, put on your coordinates so the coordinate system takes a help of a reference system to relate it with the natural and to the virtual so there forms your geoid geoid is nothing but the formation of trying to map the surface of earth frankly so you, how do you do it we have taken the um, msl that is mean sea level so your mean sea level is considered as a zero height so there are different heights based on this relevance you create your heights so once you start collecting your mean sea level and add rl to it then you get your geoid so you take your datum that is your reference system on to the reference system you add to your coordinate uh, system to it so you are uh, link dependent on a virtual environment building a virtual system and you are telling that this point is this point on ground so once you map it you you have brought all your information into a virtual system now how there are maybe you will have a challenge of measuring things since it is not 1 meter if maybe if you are measuring on ground it may not be accurate on a geoid right it's it's understood because you are taking a reference system of a mean sea level that is so so many kilometers apart maybe if you are in delhi so it may not actually match so what do you do you project it right so based on your local understanding you project your data into different forms all right so your globe is a uh, our earth is a spheroid more you can say a sphere right so you can now project it into different formats and each has a different application if you see for uh, transportation specifically through sea follow a different projection system why because it's more accurate in the water right if you just see the first example suppose you uh, project the whole earth into onto a cylinder this is how you form a grid right the but if you turn it into a graticule so this point is actually referring again into this right so now if you see a cone so this shape this this size is more it's smaller when you compare here so it may not be accurate right so here you may have 1 meter but here it may be different so that is why i it's it's i i understand it's a very complex concept but i'll just give you a snapshot of this concept why because it is one of the building block of mapping your location from ground on to the uh virtual system so you may come across majorly around projection because uh the quick projection example is okay you have already heard one of your projection is uh geographic coordinate system is what in uh, uh projection language called which is your latitude and longitude value which is expressed in degrees but the same thing suppose if you want to measure accurately you will be having utm that is universal transverse marketer utm so most of your data which you see on your uh, google maps is in actually utm it helps you measure accurately so suppose it is telling you that uh, distance from uh, your home to the nearest uh, medical store that's 5 meter okay it's maybe 10 minutes but the distance maybe it is saying around 1 km so that is where your projection matters it is able to exactly measure and give you almost an accurate output to you so that is where projections plays a crucial role okay this is an other example of how the data if you see the moment you project 
you are actually globe is like this but if you are projecting this is what happens to the data from here if you project it turns here so you see as i just said utm so in utm all your data is split on to a sheet which is divided into various intervals of uh, grids all right so it might sound little uh, maybe not in a shape but it ultimately lets you see if you are just spreading the whole globe onto a paper if you put it on a flat sheet this is how you see it right the curvature here on top is represented here and the more farther portion this portion is it 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 expands right as you can when you project it onto okay yes now you have learned about the basics you have understood the building blocks the process the main uh, points on how you get your data different uh, remote sensing tools objects so you have your data ultimately now you are coming to the next point your applications so by now i must have already taken few of your examples but what you are seeing on screen is just more like a maybe few examples i have written here GIS is actually into every activity of what we do. In fact, you can apply it, right? So maybe if you are applying your uh, AutoCAD to designing a building, GIS you do it for a hundred other maybe no even I think thousand plus applications on the real world. So I think I'll just run through some of the. topic application names and give you few examples just read out that's it okay so education how can you apply gis in education right government has mapped government of india has actually mapped various schools across india right they brought it all into a single platform in gis showing different schools different infrastructure available in that and they are able to understand the gap of it and also this information if you see it in a different angle you can actually check what is the nearest school to you right you can see where your nearest colleges are right that same information is a different application for you it's a solution for you maybe a different solution for another one so coming to health you must have by now already seen how covid is spreading across and you must have seen definitely the map right a global map so from health point of view yes even john snow who actually started in 1856 he did it for uh, health purpose only so insurance there are a lot of floods a lot of natural calamities so it helps insurance organizations to understand where how much property what is the loss to the property and they can query it and they can actually calculate the liability they are in and various other uh, more deep applications to it in manufacturing okay this is again a wide different field maybe yes it lets you know a raw material is at a certain location and you need to transport it here and then is it really worth it to get the material on to your uh, manufacturing location okay and to construction yes nowadays most of the government is also even applying gis uh, based application into construction uh maybe for a highway you source different data using drone you get the data and you process it and it tells you the amount of uh, uh construction activity the uh, the momentum it has taken in terms of uh, work done right and in real estate it lets you query different types of properties assets maybe uh, lets you choose between uh, what is your proximity to are you close to a bus station is it uh, too far or is it uh, is there there are no industries nearby the same thing will apply on to different people for you i have told this application but for a government organization they will help them in terms of planning okay they may they are planning suppose an industrial estate they they are able to understand okay there is no water body nearby okay i am around 500 meters from a settlement okay then i will not be having a problem in setting up an industrial estate here so coming to the retail Uh, maybe all your uh, shopping malls everyone what they do is okay just take example of uh, lifestyle 
they map all across india locations and they are able to see which store is making money which store is not and it lets them understand how much they need to focus on that specific uh, store or how uh, what is the fault in it is it not close to a residential area or is it very out uh, it's put on the outskirts so as you see uh, different requirements makes you uh, look at the data in a different way same data we would see okay what is your nearest mall okay how would i travel there uh, is there a cinema hall there or is a specific store of your uh, interest is there or not coming to public safety yeah we have seen a lot of uh, maybe you can if you are in an emergency if you send your uh, information it will let you track you come to you and the same same way google maps has integrated now public safety into it suppose there is a road spill some oil spill somewhere on a road so you get that update there right so gis has all of these it's frankly saying all of these can be put into gis in one system and you can actually query and understand the interrelation between each of these gis is like a subject which is interdisciplinary it's not like it is only limited to a specific sector it has its branches everywhere every anything you want okay you want to okay uh maybe i'll continue i think in between i'll keep on uh, linking one one application sector to the other application okay sustainability it lets you understand okay how much is the forest cover this time okay uh, is there any business which is cutting down more trees a specific area i think you must have already heard some news breaking news that okay there is a lot of forest fire uh, in a specific area or it might have be what might be the cause for it all right so you are able to identify the cause and then see okay if if there is more more uh, maybe a more if you chopping down more trees you are able to understand okay this is the implication on the biodiversity that is where the whole ecosystem is getting damaged so the repercussions of it so it helps you understand that i'll also give you a case study on the on this point which is again linked to natural resources here so natural resources here yes, suppose if you see uh, forest survey of india right every 5 years they release a, a census of what is the forest cover in india all right so how are they able to do it they use gis they use satellite data they process it using different techniques and the concepts and they give out come out with the statistics and tell you all right if you're seeing the last 20 years data you are able to know that okay uh maybe uh maybe uh, your the the city or the town or place where you're living had much more forest or green areas but now no it's more into more uh expansion that it's it lets you visualize that and also at the same time query it all right coming to telecommunications uh planning different uh network towers planning the complete uh Uh, what do you call it your uh, fiber network it goes even to the level of an mm so mm accuracy you will be requiring in terms of telecommunication because you are suppose you're going for a trench and then uh, you need to know where it is on which side of the road it is and how do you get back in order to uh, uh, come to the maintenance of it all right so coming to water this is a vast subject you can map all the water bodies and with the time frame suppose maybe your town may be having a small lake maybe it is seasonal right it it might uh, may not have water all through the year so what happens someone suppose they try to occupy it okay so you get back and check your historic data you see that the uh, the hfl or the high flood level line of the pond is actually more but someone has occupied it so it lets you maybe that's one of the example i'm telling you the same application for water if you want to do suppose you are planning a dam to construct a dam so you will be taking uh, the the extent of the origin and you will be uh, de- uh, generating the whole drainage data which you will be using again dependent on the uh, satellite data where you will get the dam data which is digital elevation model so from the d- dams you create your uh, flow 
slope values from which you will be understanding your path the water takes so applying different tolerance levels you will be able to get the actual drainage path the water takes so it it lets you maybe analyze more carefully that okay these are this is the natural path which the water is going to take so here if i create an obstruction and i create a construct a dam it is going to be more helpful and uh, here maybe there may be more uh, influx of water because of the uh, sloping so i probably i have to construct a, little, a barrier so that there is no flooding on to the other side so that is how water uh, is it's, it's it's one of the example i'm giving for water you know coming to government government is actually you can say the first uh, user of gis because they altogether they see and plan and do the governance on to the uh, regional aspects like see a town uh, every municipality has a gis wing it lets them understand okay where are my taxes coming from uh, who are the defaulters okay and uh, how many houses are there it helps them uh, uh, understand their jurisdictions different wards different ward maps how many houses are there what is the population in it and uh, coming to utilities you have maybe your sewerage lines okay your raw water lines where are different uh, or exactly they are going on underground right and it helps you understand and plan are they intersecting with any other of the utilities like suppose you are having an uh, over the ground uh, a high tension cable and suppose you have to go with a trench and you maybe you will understand okay this is where uh, the foundation of a specific uh, pylon tower is so i may not i cannot go into their right of way so it's one of the examples i'm telling and it also helps you plan a lot of utility lines suppose you are planning a sewerage network for a complete city so it lets you know how much is the kilometer uh, Uh, you have to uh, pipeline is required and uh, at different different junctions you have to go trenchless it lets you know what is the diameter and uh, based on the elevation data it lets you know the sloping and then lets you plan uh, okay how much is your depth you have to go if you have to go with a gravity system so it's again each and every application of civil engineering has some relation to gis in which you use it as a tool transportation it lets you plan suppose you have a metro you will be knowing okay this is my area which i am seeing how much uh, what is your uh, last mile connectivity i need to provide from my metro station right you need you will understand that okay this much amount of area is dependent on this specific metro station for that matter it lets you plan the whole metro system right you have a different okay you will understand where is the most dense area how much might be the ridership of that specific area and then okay what at what interval is it optimum to build a, a station right and natural resources i have already come uh, it's little interrelated to sustainability because you want to uh, save your natural resources that's where you want to be sustainable so your forest covers your forest fires there is a nasa website which shows you even now today where a natural fire is happening across the globe so it is live data it it is so robust it gets data from uh, different satellites process it gives you puts you on a map you can just watch it in your browser so these are few examples which i am telling you there are even more i am telling you there are thousand plus applications if you are just googling you will see the thousand applications of it maybe yes you are using you must have used uber or ola they are again all using gis right 